Hey guys, Crave the Lazy Geek here, and today we're gonna do polar alignment with Nina. So as many of you guys know, there is a polar alignment feature in Nina that is actually working shockingly well and is pretty fast to put into place. Um, it is just a bit more effort than uh, SharpCap, for example. But then in Nina, you can expose for longer. You can, it, it feels like it is more permissive of conditions. Uh, Nina will use certain techniques that are very different than SharpCap. So for example, we will not have to look at the North Celestial Pole or the South uh, Celestial Pole directly. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Now also for SharpCap, um, well, now SharpCap works very well with like very um, with high higher focal length um, setups, so you don't need to use the guide, guide cam like you used to a long time ago. Uh, but this method actually would require the Nina method requires like a, a lot of focal length uh, for things to work fine. And here I have only a 135 millimeter lens, so it's not going to give us the best results ever, but it's going to be able to let you see how it all works in Nina. Now, before we start, one of the very important things to uh, make sure of is because this method will use plate solving, you want to make sure that your plate solving ta tab, so I'm on this tab right now, is properly set up. So right now I'm using ASTAP for plate solving and you want to make sure in your equipment tab that uh, the focal length here is properly set up. Once you have those two properly set up, we're good to go. And uh, for that, we'll go into the imaging tab and this mount, I've fiddled with it so much that I'm pretty sure it's probably not well polar aligned. So we'll see that right now. Another thing with polar alignment in Nina is because it uses um, such traditional techniques, it is better, it is easier to achieve polar alignment if your tripod is more or less level. Uh, it, will be, it will require more time and more iterations if your tripod is not level. So this is one of those times when spending a little bit of time to level your tripod more or less correctly is better. <laughs> but otherwise, once you've achieved polar alignment, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. Well, at any rate, um, let's have a look. So to get to polar alignment, you go into the imaging tab and there is this, um, there is an icon somewhere that says polar alignment. There it is, this icon here. Once you click on it, on the middle tab, we'll have a new tab called polar alignment. And we can go into the settings. Um, here, I think it tells us where Polaris should be in a polar scope uh, that looks like an ioptron kind of polar scope, which is pretty neat. So you can do like a first approximation. The problem being that my mount does not have a polar scope. It does not have any way to do polar alignment. I think there's an uh, optional polar scope that's available for it, but you know. So uh, sh what shall we do? So plate solved polar alignment. I'll put my exposure time to five seconds because we have some clouds and I want to make sure that uh, we will see the stars under the clouds. Um, and I will keep all of the other information uh, correct. And for now, I also, it's necessary for me to connect to the actual mount. So I am going to connect to uh, the mount so that I can actually slew it. Or at least I believe it is important. Uh, but yes, now that I have the mount connected, I can actually click on those um, on those uh, tabs. Now you can see there is this like okay, first things altitude measurements. Okay, point telescope east or west near declination zero and near horizon. So for me, east is towards the wall, so that doesn't work. West seems like it should work. So I will put my declination to 180 degrees, so it will go that direction. The meridian offset is a bit like uh, fidgety. I'll try 110, we'll see what it gives us. And I'm just gonna slew. So if I were to use the east side of the horizon, I'd put the offset to the meridian would be something like 70 degrees. So uh, meridian being like over me and then um, I want to be like 20 degrees off of the horizon to have like some way of, uh, of looking at things. Uh, when it's the west, that becomes a bit less obvious, right? So 
Um, to the east, I'd put like uh, offset 70 degrees, so that 90 minus 70, 20 degrees, and declination would be uh, zero. But here, it's to the west, so I reverse everything, and now we're doing uh, the meridian offset minus the meridian, minus 90 degrees, so it will be 20 degrees abo above the horizon with a declination of 180. So that's a bit meh, iffy, so it might be better to just do it by hand with the control of, the, uh, of EQ mod, for example, but it is possible. Now we're going to click on measure altitude error, Basically, it's going to take a plate solve exposure. It's going to move somewhere else. It's going to take another plate solve exposure and it will compare the two. So let's see how this works. So you see it takes one exposure. We started clicking. It solved the image and now it's slewed and it's slewed to the second exposure. Now it takes the second exposure after settling the scope. And then it's going to solve again. Unfortunately, the second solve did not work. It might be that we're a bit out of focus, or it might simply be that I need to turn off that light. So I am going to turn off that light to make sure that the process works, works well. So I'm trying again after turning off the light. Hopefully it's going to work. It might be pure, uh, poor focus on my side, or it could be simply that the clouds are causing issues. Okay, so now it worked, and let's go back to the Polar Alignment tab, and we can see that we have a message saying that we are 34 arc minutes too low. So we want to increase the altitude of, uh, the, uh, of, the, um, uh, of the mount. mount. So let's do that. So I have um, unfastened the, uh, altitude, uh, the altitude knob to some extent on the other side, and now I'm raising the mount's altitude a little bit, and we can measure the altitude again. So see, each time it takes a full exposure, plate solves, take, moves a bit, takes a second exposure, plate solves, moves a, moves a bit. So it's a bit more complicated. So we're still too low, so I didn't do enough, and so I can do that again. So I'll keep doing those iterations. A few minutes later. Okay, and it might be linked to the very low resolution I have, plus it's a Bayard uh, camera. But I am not able to get like too low, so right now 17 arc minutes is the best I'm able to achieve. So let's go with that for the moment. And we can go towards the uh, azimuth measurement. And so this time it's point the telescope south near declination zero and near meridian. Okay, so... Uh, this time, okay, so let's try to point uh, south. I'm not sure what exactly the meridian offset will actually mean in that case. Um, the declination... Well, let's just slew. It will go very close to the horizon, I would say, or at the horizon. And then I can always raise it above the horizon so that we can get uh, something. All right, no, it's not at all at the horizon. Declination zero and near meridian. So this is perfect. This is actually quite high in the sky, so that makes things much easier. And now we're going to measure the azimuth error. And so it's just like before. It's the same thing. It will take an exposure, uh, plate solve, slew somewhere else, very close, plate solve again, and compute some kind of polar alignment or polar misalignment based on those two measurements. And now I am... Uh, <laughs> five degrees to east. So that's a lot. Okay, so I moved it a lot and let's see this time what our azimuth error will be. A relativistic eternity later. Okay, and we're more or less done on the azimuth axis. Now the problem is that I actually had to move the tripod physically. Uh, for this to work well. Uh, so I am sure that we will have messed up with the altitude itself, but you see the principle. It's a, it's a very iterative process. It can take quite a bit of time to get done, but once it, it is done, it is done. So it takes much longer than sharp cap to be, uh, to be very honest, but it works well. Now there's one more step we can do, which is the Darv slew. And this is basically a verification 
of the um, of the polar alignment. So this telescope will slew half the time in one direction on the RA axis and then slew back. And if there is no polar alignment error, it will display as a, as a straight line. Otherwise, we'll see a V-shaped line. Now, uh, the azimuth error measurement uh, slew the telescope near the meridian, otherwise east of or west. So right now we are near the meridian. So uh, let's try that. So this will actually take 65 seconds. Okay, so we're halfway done and the scope is now slewing back. So I'm pretty sure we'll get a beautiful V because of the fact that I had to move the tripod and I didn't redo the altitude uh, error measurement. Okay, it's done. And let's have a look into the actual image panel. And wow, it's not that bad, especially like so, with a 135 millimeter lens, it doesn't, you know, appear to be um, the best, you know, resolution ever. So it, it probably would uh, not show any issue with even a very bad polar alignment. But it seems that even though I had to move the tripod, since the tripod is on slabs of stone on a relatively level balcony, it didn't imp impact the altitude measurement as much as I feared it would. And even though I can kind of detect a slight slanted V with the resolution that we have, which is only 135 millimeter with fairly large pixel pixels of the ASI 533MC Pro, uh, we don't see a lot of, uh, of problems. And in a way, that's fine because I measured with my main imaging camera and uh, that means it will not be affected too much by this polar alignment. So we can see that we can actually check the quality of that polar alignment as part of that polar alignment feature. And that's pretty much it. So we can see that it's a very iterative process, but it has the big advantage that, you know, you can expose for a long time. Uh, so you can get more stars than you would like in a real time kind of system like SharpCap or in SharpCap, for some reason, you get much more frustrated because we're, you're waiting for the next frame and you're like kneeling down at your nubs and yeah, kind of thing. Uh, but this one, one of the biggest advantages right now, the northern sky is actually not great with regards to clouds. And I'm sure I would have a lot of trouble with sharp cap. But because of uh, Nina's way of doing thing, we can use the western or the eastern horizon, uh, whichever is clear, and we can use uh, near the meridian at declination zero degrees. And that's like up, of, up, up in the sky. So you do need at least two directions that are clear compared to sharp cap, which only needs one. Uh, but it gives you more options to work with, right? So I think this is quite useful. And, you know, I think I might actually use that more than I expected, especially since you can double check your polar alignment very easily with the DARF slew. And uh, yeah, so that's about it for using polar alignment tool in Nina. I know it's been like a, a big request from a lot of comments and subscribers. So it's finally there. It's fairly simple to do. You just need to uh, slew to the proper location. It might be even better to slew manually. And then just like let Nina uh, do the measurements. You need to have your plate solving properly set up though. Um, and you need your to have your telescope connected for this to work. So it's not uh, like, uh, not, uh, like do uh, this and then uh, and then everything's done, right? It's much le much less magical than SharpCap is, but it is very useful. And with that, that's pretty much it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. Um, it's always a bit of fun to try new techniques. I had never used the polar alignment like before I just tried and uh, in Nina at least. And you know, it, it works pretty well. And you know, I want to use a bigger telescope, right? Because with a very low resolution kind of setup, uh, the polar alignment itself will be much less precise. Um, sharp cap would probably get a better result, but I think we got a result that is sufficient, not the best, but sufficient, which I think is enough. Huh? Um, and I'd probably be able to do like, you know, guided or unguided pretty well. Um, and actually like, uh, I used this a couple of nights ago and then I was able to do unguided exposures fairly well at that resolution, no problem whatsoever. So, eh, not bad at all. So that was it for polar alignment. Um, so I hope this was useful. If you are not a subscriber to this channel, first welcome to the channel. And you know, if you like this kind of video, there's like various types of videos that I post, but 
all revolving around astrophotography and astronomy. Uh, typically practical tips and tips as well as like the theory and how it relates to the practice um, as well. So if that sounds interesting to you, please feel free to go down below consider considering clicking that subscribe button, little bell notification icon. And anyway, like if you like this video, if you found it useful, please go down below, click on the little uh, thumbs up icon. Uh, also known as the like button. And also if you have any comments or any remarks or anything you want to tell me or ask me about, please feel free to go down in the comments. I read all of them and I do try to answer all of them fairly successfully up to now. So again, thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars, the planets and you know, the cosmos. And I'll see you next time.